everybody, welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. Today we're going to be working on our 1948 Ford 8N. You'll recall over uh, last winter we fixed up our 48 uh, 8N. We did quite a series on it. Maybe in the, in the description box down below. If I think of it when I edit, I'll uh, put a link to the playlist of all the videos on this tractor. Anyway, uh, it all went off perfectly except um, the steering. I haven't been really able to enjoy this thing the way I want because uh, once we got it out and uh, rolling around, it, it became apparent there's, there's something wrong with the steering box. It turns to the left just fine, but it's really, really hard uh, turning to the right. And for some reason, if you're backing up, it's literally impossible to turn to the right. Um, so what I did was I, I took it all apart. I took the sectors right out. And, uh, the problem is in, the, the, the shaft and the, and the ball nut. Um, I can literally reach in with my finger and put a little resistance on the ball nut when I'm turning to the right and she locks up bad. Um, this steering box, this tractor originally had a loader on it and the steering box was empty for years. So I would assume there's wear either in the ball nut or on the shaft and the balls are trying to basically trying to climb each other, which acts like a sprag and locks the thing up when you're trying to turn. So uh, today we're going to take this all apart, get this steering box out of here and put this one in. And it seems to work just fine. Yeah, uh, yes, it's another four bolt steering box. If this was any other tractor but this one, I would just upgrade it to a two bolt box and be done with it. But this is a, a low serial number, early 1948 8N, and I want to keep it as right as possible, as, as correct as possible, except for the Chevy alternator. That's another story. Uh, anyway, let's get started. I'm going to attempt uh to remove these bolts and take just the top of the hood off i'm going to leave the dog legs and the grill and everything behind uh if, if it seems like that's going to be possible i've i've put them together that way before so let's see if we can get it apart that way i already checked luckily there's very little fuel in it so that's not going to be a bunch of added weight so to start we're going to um remove the cyclone the steering wheel, the radiator cap, pull the grill out, and see if we can get those four bolts up underneath. I will also have to figure out how the headlights are attached because the, the headlight wire is clipped to the inside of the hood. But I think, if I know myself, I've probably got some connections right underneath there that I can just undo. Yeah, I feel it. Okay, that shouldn't be so bad. That all went well. I found all the connections for the headlight wiring, so that will not be a problem. Next, we're going to remove the fuel line, the air intake pipe, and the air cleaner assembly. And bear in mind, when you put this thing down, that it's filled up to here with motor oil. So if you put it on its side, it's all going to come uh, running out. We don't want that. So we'll make sure we stand it up. All the bolts are out. I did manage to get the bolts out of the side here. Heaven knows how I will get them back in, but they're out. Now I've gone and just put a little tape around here so we don't wing up the paint on the dash because I'm sure there will be a, a amount of wiggling and jiggling to get this thing to actually um, come off the tractor. I'll, uh, I'll be back when I got it off. What do you know? I did it. So now what we have to do is um, take apart all this stuff here um, from the dash. So I'm going to kind of just leave behind what stuff I can, like the headlight switch, and but a lot of this stuff is going to have to come right off. The wiring is all attached to it. So we'll start uh, with getting the uh, battery out of the road and then the toolbox and then we'll start getting a little room to work. Now that we're in this far, I'm going to remove the oil pressure line 
and the choke rod. And then we're going to see if just possibly we've got enough slack in the wiring that I can just lift the dash and everything up off the steering shaft and lay it down over the engine here. That, that would be very, very nice if that was possible. I think if I unclip it from here, I may gain a little extra. Let's find out. Well, lucky, we just barely, barely had enough kind of wiggle room in the wiring. I got the dash and everything off without having to unhook all the wires. So now what we're gonna do is uh, remove these two, these two big nuts from the, the sector arms. Or the, I guess you could call these the pitman arms. And we'll pull them off the sector shafts with our uh, pitman arm puller. So we got the nut off. Now we're getting our pitman arm puller on here. And this is the nice OTC one we got at the Ancaster swap meet that you can actually tighten onto the... I think a lot of times just tightening these bolts will probably pop the thing off if it's not on there too tight. But this makes sure it doesn't pop off especially on a situation like this where you don't have a lot of space and the, and the jaws don't really get in there too far. That'll help keep it in there. Oh, there, like that, yeah, it just popped off. Good. I took the last, uh, the remaining bolts out of here that held this thing to the tractor, so off it comes. Oh, look down there, there's our Sherman overdrive transmission. This is the point where if you're like me, disaster can strike because I could just very well go over and put the old one back on and think I'm so smart. But um, Deb is here and she's going to make sure we put on the new one. So this is our, our new one that we fixed up. So we're going to go set it on the tractor, get it bolted down, and then uh, we'll get it centered up, put our drag links back on, or our, pardon me, our, our pitman arms back on. This box has been sitting around for so long. What I'm gonna do before I put the pitman arms on, we're gonna make sure it's centered up. So theoretically, if, if it was centered, that's exactly how the steering wheel goes on. One spoke pointing straight at you and, and two like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wind it all the way to lock over here and we're gonna count the turns. One, two, three, and three quarters. So we got to go back one and five eighths and that'll be center. So there's one and five eighths. And you should see the, a dummy spline up in both spots. So that'll get us close. That's good. Now we can put our little dust seals on and we'll bring up our pitman arm. And you might have to jiggle this, wiggle the steering. There we go. Just to get it to the exact right spot. And when the tractor is in the straight ahead position, you should see the, the pitman arm pointing approximately at that, at that stud. Let me just get this on here so it doesn't fall off. Okay. Now that we've gotten this far, we've got our pitman arms back on, and I've just snugged up the nuts in case I have to pull them back off again. Um, everything seems okay. I don't think I will, but anyway. Um, I've got the front wheel sitting on my, my turn plates. They're homemade turn plates. They're just two pieces of 3 16 plate with about a, a four inch Torrington bearing in between them, which allows uh, me to turn the wheels easily without them digging into the concrete and messing up my um, my setting. So what we're going to do is measure um, the distance between the back wheels, compare that to the distance between the front wheels, and we're looking for it to be towed in um, about an eighth of an inch. So, uh, sorry. The reason for that is I'm going to exaggerate now. You, you, you want your wheels towed in at rest because when you start driving and the back wheels are pushing on it, just the force of going down the road opens them up. 
So you tow them in a little bit so that when you start driving, they're perfectly straight or even just a tiny bit towed out is, is fine. That helps with it. That'll help with it pulling back, uh, self-centering the wheel after you turn. So I'm just going to measure from the outside of this rib to the outside of the rib. Let's see what we've got here. Oh, and another thing before, because it's a tractor and there's play and everything, before we measure, we just get between the front wheels and just push them apart like that so that all the slop is taken up in that direction. It will spring back a little bit, you see, but, but that's okay. I might even tow this one in a quarter of an inch. It's got a lot of, uh, got a lot of give. So here at the back, we've got 50 and 5 eighths. Let's see what we've got at the front. Fifty-one and a quarter. So it's it's towed out, towed out almost three quarters of an inch. So we have to close that up. So we do that by uh, turning these in the direction that will shorten the drag links. So we'll turn this guy in a little bit, and you can see the wheel move. Then we'll just kind of jiggle it like this to get everything kind of settled down. And then spread them apart like that. And let's remeasure. So now here I've got 50 and 7 eighths. Now at the front we've got. Fifty and like fifteen sixteenths, so we're very close. We'll just take a little bit more out of it. Rejiggle. Spread them. Exactly 51. So that would mean here we're looking for somewhere uh, around 50 and three quarters. And there it is, 50 and three quarters, perfect. So we can go ahead now, uh, cinch down, cinch down our drag links, finish tightening the pitman arm nuts, and we can put the tractor back together. Oh, and this, this is the first day that we're back on standard time. So my stomach thinks it's lunchtime, but there's still an hour to go. Um, this is a bad situation, but I'm going to try and make the best of it. Now we'll just go in the reverse order and put everything back together. And uh, I'll be back in a minute. It's all back together now. I've got the steering wheel on just kind of hand tight, I didn't reef it up because I want to make sure when I drive it that it's that it's it's straight, you know, not off. You can eyeball it in the shop, but you never know for sure until you get out there. So we're gonna go ahead now, um, open up the fuel. Have to put it right on the reserve because she's pretty low. Turn the battery on. All right, nothing leaking. Let's check our lights. Uh, where's the light switch here? Good. Tail lights on. Good. Work light, yeah. And last thing, the hazard lights. Okay, so we got everything. Sometimes when you do this stuff, you inadvertently unplug something and you don't realize it. So I'll close her up and we'll get her out. I've never been able to run this thing on the road in Sherman Overdrive because the front end was so wonky it'd, it'd start, you'd get like a speed wobble, even in second gear. So let's see what we got now. It's breezy out today too. I can put my hood up. And now we've got a nice chrome nut on the steering wheel before we had a, a black one. I don't even know what's correct, but okay, ignition is on. Yep. Neutral, give us some throttle. 
That's not good. All right, we found a wire unhooked um, on the back side of the dash, so hopefully this time, hopefully this time she'll go. because there was no ignition and I was cranking it over with the choke off. You see it's good now. Well pressure's up. Okay, let me get her up and see what happens. Oh, she steers nice now, both ways. Look at that. Alrighty. gets death wobble but before it would get death wobble like in second gear now you got to get going really fast in fourth gear for it so what that means is it needs the you can see here it needs the the sectors on the steering box tightened up a little bit we'll have a, a go at fixing it now so you can see that the the relationship between the there's too much play between the the, in the mesh of the sectors between the, the left front wheel and the and the right front wheel so on these old four bolt steering boxes how you how you adjust for that we have to tighten this up so um, this um, the sector housing is actually on a bit of an eccentric so you take out these four bolts and you start turning it counterclockwise and that will close up the lash between this sector and that sector. The, the, the left sector is a little bit further forward and it's got a, a gear on it that runs on the, on the gear on the ball nut, on the steering shaft. And then it, it's double-sided, right? It's also got a gear on the back of it that engages with the gear on this sector. And so if they're like loose like that, like this one is, it's gonna let this wheel flop around. So we are going to attempt to tighten this up. And I got a bad feeling that a whole bunch of oil is gonna come out of here, but we can put more, clean it up and put more oil in it. This is why everybody prefers the, uh, the later style to uh, two bolt steering box. They're just a lot easier to deal with. But like I said, here comes the oil. This one is a four bolt. And, or, and it's going to stay a four bolt, one way or the other. We'll put more oil in it later. This is a messy job. Tactical error, I should have took the bottom bolt out first. And as tempting as it is, guys will put a, uh, uh, these things leak out the, out the sector seals here. And guys will um, 
put a grease fitting in it and pump the thing full of grease, which seems like a not a bad idea. The problem is uh, the grease, it's just impossible for the grease to get into the, into the worm nut and the balls and it'll wear out. So we're just going to turn this thing counterclockwise and that will move it on the eccentric and either tighten it or loosen it. The, the problem is with these things, once they get old and worn out, it's pretty difficult really to do anything at all with them. But um, again, that's why people like the two bolt box. I'm trying to find a, a bolt hole to line up, but I'm not having much luck. I had it out on the road. Uh, you can see it's still got definitely some slop between the sectors. Um, I, I've twirled this thing around and around and around. There's probably just wear on the teeth and I don't think you'll ever get it out. But what we're going to do is I can at least now feel it's a lot more positive. That, so I can now push it out and see what our toe is at and adjust it further if need be. Fifty and three quarters. Fifty and three quarters. So that's pretty much dead, dead straight ahead. I kind of think if I tow them in a little bit, that should help. That should help a little bit more. To do that, I need an 11 16 wrench. Okay, so we gave it a little tweak and got the toe back to uh, a quarter inch toed in. I'm gonna go try it again. And once I'm happy with it, I'll uh, pull the steering wheel off and refill the steering box. You can fill it from up top here. Okay, so now uh, we can put the oil back in it. These things, the, the steering shaft is hollow and it's cross drilled down at the bottom. It will take a bit of time because this stuff is pretty gooey. But eventually it'll get down in there and we'll be good to go. We finished getting the oil back in it and I got the steering wheel back on and all tightened down. So that's it, uh, job done. Very happy with the result. I could drive it flat out on the road in overdrive and it's nice and steady, no more death wobble. Well, that'll do it for this one. And I hope it's a long time again before I have to mess with another four bolt eight end steering box. Oh brother, they are, they are definitely a challenge. The problem is there's no parts for them. And uh, when they wear, wear a little bit, Trying to trying to get them tightened up, it's just it's just really hard because when you pull the the double sided sector against the ball nut to get it tight, you you no longer have enough adjustment on the other one. So to keep the two of them, the the two sectors tight together so that you don't get the the speed wobble, it's got to be loose against the ball nut, and you end up with with play in the steering wheel. The things like. What is it? Almost 80 years. It's 75 years old. <laughs> what do you want? It still works. I, I could go flat out on the road with it now. That That's all that matters for when I go visiting. Anyway, uh, I want to thank you for tuning in. Thank you for continuing to support our channel. And I hope you'll come back next time and see what we're doing. I kind of think in the next video, uh, we'll probably have Gord's uh, Ferguson TE20 back in here. There's, uh, even though we finished uh, getting it back running good, there's a couple of things that uh, I spoke to him about that we're going to address before I take it back over to his place. Anyway, uh, I'm going to take off now. So until we meet again, this is Kevin checking out from the Claremont Classic Garage. So long for now.